All right, so I'm here with Natalie, who works with a lot of buyers that are relocating from out of town, and I wanted you to help them understand what are some mistakes common to folks that are looking to relocate to Middle Tennessee. Out of town, out of town folks that are looking to buy in Middle Tennessee, what are some mistakes that they can avoid making? Okay, um, I'm thinking of two mistakes. One would be thinking that every location in a city is the same. We have a lot of people who move here specifically to go to Williamson County Schools. Mm -hmm. um, they want to move to Franklin, but don't necessarily realize there are different pockets of Franklin um, <laughs> that vary. Yeah. So um, needing to understand that everything is not the same, even though it's in the same zip code. So what are they thinking, typically? Um, typically they're thinking, I need to be in this city to be in this school, and as long as it's in this school zone, um, I can just pop up in any property and have the same experience I would in, you know, the other side of town. So how do some of these neighborhoods, I think you mentioned Franklin, um, what are, how do some of these, how do some of these neighborhoods differ in a meaningful way to this person? There are sides of Franklin that are going to be very neighborhood focused. So, you know, you see your kids outside riding bikes with the neighbors. Mm -hmm. There are other sides that they're very rural and mm -hmm. agricultural. Um, and so just having a completely different experience. There yeah. are also some pieces of Franklin that feel a little more inner city. Okay. Um, and then you also have like Franklin, you have the mall side. So mm. if you're into shopping and going to restaurants and living that kind of life yeah. versus downtown Franklin, the square, it's more historic and homey. What I hear you saying is that if I was going to be relocating to Franklin, it's such a big area and I can have such a different experience depending on where I am. If I'm not really familiar with that area, there's a lot that I could learn talking with somebody like you or somebody, somebody else who knows the area, but there, there's probably a lot to learn in that decision. So a mistake that I might make if I'm relocating is just like you said earlier, I assume it's kind of all the same. The neighborhoods are all the same and Franklin is whatever I'm going to get. Right. right, correct. So, okay, that's good. What are, what are other mistakes that some a buyer that's looking to relocate to this area makes? Well, I would say tied to that, they need to work with an agent who actually knows the locations where they're going to be shopping. Um, okay. So a mistake people would make is, often people think that the listing agent is going to be the expert on the house. So let me just call the listing agent and that's where I will glean the expertise. Mm. Um, but you really need a real estate agent who is an expert on the area, on the location, on the process, okay. um, and that it is well resourced. Mm. So being well resourced can mean a few different things. Um, one is having leverage. Um, typically- What do you mean leverage? Great question. Typically people who are buying a luxury home for instance are very busy um and so they only have a short window of time okay. and so you need an agent who can kind of respond to your last minute needs so let's say that you have you know an inspection to go to you're able to leverage that to a teammate or someone else to take care of that so you can give your full attention okay. to the person coming in town so you're saying some of these out-of-town buyers have got small pockets of time and whether it's you or another agent like you, it's important that they have small team or big team, but a team that works together to make sure that they can meet the needs of this individual and make sure they have an educational and valuable experience when they're in town. Absolutely. Okay. You're essentially looking for a guide. Awesome. And that guide needs to have help. Okay. Whether it's us or anybody else, that piece is is really important at what point in someone's process like we know you know there's this there's this time period that people are discovering a new area at what point should they seek that guidance from an agent that can help them learn about the areas there is no time too soon um, so I would say as soon as you're thinking of moving to a city mm -hmm. that would be a time to start interviewing agents. Even if you're not committing to one immediately, that would be a good time to start interviewing agents. Um, I've known people who they've contacted me five years before they come here because it's important to them to build a relationship over time and know the person they're going to be working with. It's a little early, but... It could be a little early. Um, so I would say typically six months is a great timeline. Okay. Um, 
waiting until the last minute, it can make it a little more difficult. It's definitely doable. I would never say, oh, you have passed the time that you sure. should reach out to an agent. Yeah. But I'd give it a six-month buffer. Six-month buffer, mm -hmm. okay. That's good. We hear a lot of buyers, both local and out of town, that we've worked with over the years say, uh, in fact, I just had this conversation at my gym this week. Um, he said, hey, I'm going to reach out to you this summer. I'm not ready to do anything yet. And um, he can reach out to me whenever works. But from my perspective, like you said, it's really never too early. Because for me, um, if there's a relationship there, uh, I might just have a question and appreciate not everybody wants that, but for me, I would appreciate being able to call somebody that I feel like has time, will make time for me and gives me the attention for questions that I have. And I know you're that way as well. You take a very consultative approach to really helping clients in that way. So I appreciate that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.